if we recap back uh, what we have learned in dynamics, then you will uh, always see that vibration is under uh, the final uh, topics of uh, dynamics, uh, I mean, even your textbooks or even in your course, dynamic course itself, uh, the final topics of your uh, uh, dynamics. So uh, some we have a separate uh, vibrations uh, topics uh, or course itself just to address uh, the effect of uh, so-called uh, vibrations, uh, the, the response caused by uh, 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 vibrations or here is referring to uh, different frequencies. Uh, and the dynamic response or what we call vibrations at different frequencies and uh, what or how we can determine them. All right, so if you look into uh, by, uh, the dynamic itself, uh, we have uh, first we learn uh, kinematics, kinetics, right? So kinetic and kinetics of particles, okay? So here, uh, uh, under kinematic, we look into rectilinear, curvilinear motions. Then kinetic of particles, uh, uh, we learn. Okay, uh, the, we we consider uh, the, the 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 force coming in. Then we making use of uh, three methods: uh, Newton's uh, second law, work and energy principle, and uh, impulse and momentum methods to actually determine the motions uh, subjected to uh, so called the force. All right, so here uh, all, if you see that uh, under dynamic itself, uh, follow from particle itself, what a, a dot itself, then we go into a rigid body. So, so under rigid body, also the same remit, uh, repeated, but we are looking into the entire uh, body itself, okay? Uh, rigid body, which is uh, made of uh, uh, many uh, particles, uh, so kinematics. Uh, of rigid bodies, then also kinetic of rigid body. Okay, so under dynamic itself uh, is more toward rigid body motions. So if you move uh, after this dynamic at the end of the, the, the dynamics textbook itself, you have uh, one of the topic is mechanical vibrations. So under mechanical vibrations, we are treating that uh, body or the system will undergo elastic motions. So here, uh, we cover uh, the single degree of freedom. So, okay, I mean how uh, that particular uh, uh, particular uh, system itself uh, basically uh, uh, deforms. Okay, uh, here uh, is talking about uh, the deformations under free vibration, force vibrations. Okay, so under free and force vibration, we have uh, we have. Uh, the damping and without the dampings. Okay, so undamp and damp systems. So from single degree of freedom, we move to multiple degree of freedom or two degree of freedoms. So here uh, we are looking into uh, also determine the response, uh, uh, determine the response under free vibration and determine the response under uh, force vibration. Uh, so under force vibration, we have two type of uh, force. Uh, so one is a general force and one is a harmonics excitations. All right, so here today uh, we are focusing more towards the harmonics excitations. Uh. So here, uh, but why this is so important, uh, harmonic excitations. Uh, when we say uh, when we say harmonic excitations, uh, this particular topic itself is uh, very important. Uh, under uh, under the single degree of freedom itself, we also learn. Uh, yeah. Uh, from uh, general forcings, okay, to uh, harmonic excitation. So harmonic excitation basically you have is similar like what we have mentioned uh, uh, in uh, aphatics. Uh, so our our load itself, our force itself is a uh, harmonic excitation. So when we say harmonic excitations, then it is a sinusoidal uh, so-called uh, functions. So in this case, or uh, last week we said that that. This itself is a, what we call a, a dynamic loading. So, okay, then you will uh, cause a fluctuating stress or what we call here a cyclic, uh, cy uh, uh, completely reverse uh, stresses. All right. So, uh, under uh, this, uh, what we call harmonic excitations, so this frequency itself also will cause uh, the, the, what we call the, 
the load itself will also cause a, 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 a harmonic uh, so-called response, okay? Harmonic uh, excitation. Also will cause harmonic response. So your your vibrations or what we call your response or dynamic response is actually a, a sinusoidal also. Okay. So it's over T. So this right, right if you have a dynamic response, uh, of course, it's like what we have learned with itself, uh, uh, you have a uh, so called a cyclic or what we call repeated loads, then you have a repeated or what we call a fluctuating stresses. So here, harmonic response, uh, it will also cause harmonic, uh, what we call completely reverse stresses. Uh, so you have this uh, 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 repeated or what we call completely reverse stresses coming into play. All right, so that basically it's what we have learned. So under uh, harmonic excitation, why is so important? Because uh, here uh, it is very uh, uh, previously, uh, I mean, last week itself under fatigue itself, we didn't really look into this. So uh, this, free, this harmonic excitations, uh, it actually come because this is a, it is a, what we call uh, a cyclic uh, motions, okay, uh, a sinusoidal function. So this sinus, sinusoidal function, it comes with the amplitude as well as its uh, period, okay? So this period T equals to one over F, so it comes with a, a, a frequency. So here we are saying that this force itself, okay, it, it actually comes with uh, its uh, uh, amplitude as well as its frequency, okay? So you have this, uh, probably your F equals to A uh, sine uh, two pi F T, okay? Or A sine omega T in this case. So this particular harmonic excitation will give us a harmonic response. Also, we'll have this X equals to a uh, uh, probably uh, B, uh, we call we call it uh, uh, respond x not okay sorry x not uh, sine also omega t so it come with a uh, same frequency all right so that is uh, why it is important later on we will see so different frequencies when this when we said we have a different excitation frequency okay coming into play. So it will, uh, if your F is uh, faster, okay, so if your F is larger, then you will have a, a shorter uh, a time period, then you will have, this is faster. So you could be have same amplitude, F equals to A sine, but uh, here is two by F uh, one uh, T. All right, so here is two by F not T, two by F one T. So F one uh, is larger than F two. So you have a higher uh, frequency. So different frequency will give uh, basically different uh, amplitude uh, here. I mean, talking about the X not itself, All right? So uh, it depends on its uh, dynamic characteristic or dynamic behavior we, where it will actually affect uh, the overall vibrations, uh, overall dynamic response X itself. All right, so later on, we will see a little bit on, uh, recap back uh, what we have learned in mechanical vibrations, particularly on uh, these harmonic excitations. Then uh, we see what is the uh, impact of uh, this particular frequency uh, come into play. When it's come into play, then uh, your response, uh, when, uh, when, uh, at different frequency, uh, it will have at uh, different amplitudes. So if it's high amplitude, then you higher it will create higher stress. Uh, or, so if you low amplitude, then it will create lower stress. So this particular uh, reverse uh, uh, repeated stress also uh, basically is affecting our so-called fatigue analysis uh, because uh, the amplitude the it, the amplitude of the, the the repeated stresses okay it all depends on the amplitude of our dynamic response. Okay, so you imagine uh, if your cantilevers, okay, if you vibrate at this particular amplitude, 
okay, up and down, okay, going up, then going down, uh, going up and down at this particular amplitude itself, comparing with uh, the the stress induced at this at this at this uh, so called end, comparing with uh, probably you have a higher amplitude, okay, you have a higher amplitude. If the stress created at this same end itself is uh, totally different, okay, you have high amplitude, then here the stresses will create higher, higher stress at the fixed end. So here uh, we are looking into this particular uh, parts, okay, where we think that is important uh, when we do a uh, static analysis, okay. So under vibration, uh, there are three types of uh, analysis. Uh. So here, uh, uh, in, in, in inside ANSYS work, uh, workbench itself, under vibration related, uh, related also, we have three types of analysis. So the first one is called model analysis. Uh. So model analysis is an analysis that uh, determining okay, the dynamic uh, characteristics of your particular uh, so-called system or your uh, system under testing. Right, so uh, from this model analysis itself, what we will obtain uh, is uh, the the natural frequency and uh, its uh, corresponding mode shapes. Uh. So what are these uh, these parameters? Uh? So this natural frequency and mode mode shapes are uh, so basically it come together. So, okay, so one natural frequency it have its own corresponding mode shapes. Okay, so uh, this natural frequency basically tell us how uh, this system or this particular uh, so-called uh, your design, your model itself will behave dynamically. Here is talking about dynamics. Uh, so how it behave at at a certain frequencies. How it will uh, uh, behave. What I mean behave here is uh, how it will uh, the deforms. Okay, the deformation. Talking about elastic uh, deformations. Uh, it will deform at its at a certain frequency. So knowing uh, knowing this natural frequency at, at their and and their corresponding mode shapes, we know how uh, this system or the design will behave dynamically. So what we have previously uh, learned is at zero hertz. Okay. So when you have a, a static load applied, okay, what will be its deformations? Okay, so that is what we have learned. But over different frequencies, okay. This system will behave that uh, differently. Okay, so how to know its behavior or its deformations is by uh, uh, performing this uh, analysis called model analysis. So from the model analysis itself, we we will be given a set of uh, natural frequency and its uh, corresponding mode shapes. So we know that at its at certain frequency, how this uh, uh, for example this bumper itself uh, will uh, deforms. Okay, so that is very important. So by knowing this, okay, by doing knowing the natural and motion itself, uh, uh, we can predict. Okay, we can predict how uh, uh, if I run this particular, uh, uh, if I give an excitation frequencies, uh, excitation at a certain point at here. Okay, if I give an excitation at a certain point, this particular point itself. Right, then what will uh, this particular bumper uh, deforms okay, at that particular frequency? If you still remember our excitation, like just now I mentioned, it is a sinusoidal. So, okay, harmonic excitation is sinusoidal. So, here we need to give an information of uh, our F, okay, F not, okay, the A is similar, huh? uh, F equals to let's say A sine uh, 2 pi FD. So, information that is given have to be the amplitude itself okay in in static static uh, in static uh, analysis uh, we only deal with this a okay at a what is the the amplitude of our force okay and it will be something over time uh, it will be like this so this is my a so in dynamic analysis particularly the vibration itself uh, this sinusoidal function itself is a dynamic load that the, it, this sinusoidal function itself it come with a frequency so it could be uh, at 
different frequency. So we will want to know at different frequency, at the same amplitude of cross different frequency, what will be uh, the deformation of the system that we are analyze, analyzing. Okay, so by knowing this, right, then we will actually predict, okay, we will predict how this thing behave. Okay, not only predict, we can even go into uh, detailed calculation at uh, what amplitudes, so okay, this particular, uh, uh, this particular uh, so-called uh, uh, system and the under analysis uh, will deform. Okay, so first thing, uh, if you want to know, it's it's uh, it's it's uh, so called here talking about harmonic response. If you want to know harmonic response, first thing we need to do is we need to know its dynamic characteristics. Okay, dynamic characteristic basically we need to perform model analysis. Okay, we need to know a set of this. Okay. Right? Then we have this uh, frequency response analysis or what we call harmonic uh, analysis or harmonic response analysis. Uh. So this is what I have mentioned to you. So we are finding the X. So given, given our F, okay, F equals to A sine of uh, two pi F T, right? So what is my X? What is my response, okay? so. How to do that? So you have to consider the e effect of frequencies. Okay. So then in that case, uh, this result of uh, the model analysis is very important. So we have to uh, uh, include okay, uh, the, the, the result of this model analysis to, to determine the X, the harmonic response. All right. So from the harmonic response itself, it will basically create uh, what we call here this uh, frequency response, uh, uh, frequency response, uh, what we call uh, results. Okay, as you can see here, so it will tell you at at ten if if the same frost uh, I'm given uh, if I am given my uh, force itself equals to a uh, sine. 2 pi, so this f t itself. So if I vary this t itself, okay. If I vary this t itself, then uh, f itself, sorry. So I change my f from zero hertz, which is static, until until 50 hertz. So you will see that my response x, uh, this is my x itself. Uh, basically, uh, a become our sorry, uh, our x not. Uh, uh, sine, let's say omega or two pi f t, right? So in this case, or oh, plus another some phase value in uh, safe diff, safe phase value. So in this particular case, uh, so you have to see that I mean, uh, at different frequencies, okay, when at different f, okay, you have a difference. Uh, even a is similar, so. Uh, you have a different x naught, okay? At different frequency, can you see that the x naught is actually changing, okay? It will increase up to from 0 0.5, it can go up to 5. You see that at a certain frequency, that is a, a, a very significant change, okay? So that is where we analyze the impact or the effect of a frequency, okay? So the third one will be uh, on uh, transient response analysis. Uh. So this is uh, with uh, arbitrary excitation. So this force could be any force, okay, over time. Okay, so it's not harmonic force. So it could be an uh, impulse. Probably you have your f uh, at certain at certain t. Okay, you have an impulse, then uh, hitting on your 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 your. your what we call a system on the surface of this particular surface, what will be the response, your X itself, right? So that is a transient. So it's not a steady state. So here, under transient, your response here, we are saying that because it's not continuous, it's not steady, okay? For for example, this F itself, uh, it will coming out at one time, then go to zero. So your response, that will uh, obtain uh, is also uh, act, uh, what we call dynamic response. Uh, so basically, it will come 
then it will end, end up at zero. So that is what we call transient response analysis. For example, uh, here, harmonic response analysis uh, it will be different because uh, your force here is continuous, right? Steady, right? Your force. So your response also continuous. Okay? Your, your, your x also continuous. So basically, it gives you a function of uh, f equals to a uh, sine 2 pi ft, right? So here also will give you a x equals to x not probably a sine a 2 pi ft. All right, so that is a thing that are uh, uh, available, okay? And you can uh, use, make use of it to do your analysis. So uh, to, to perform this uh, so-called frequency response analysis or as well as your trans transition response analysis, right? You need first, uh, first, you need the what we call the uh, the 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 dynamic characteristics. Here is uh, referring to the dynamic uh, 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 so-called natural frequencies and the mode and their corresponding mode shapes uh, to determine uh, its behavior or its deformations. Okay, dynamic response. So whether it is a frequency response harmonic excitation or is the arbitrary excitations then you still need to know this uh, what we call its its characteristics okay so first okay if you are uh, uh, finding uh, harmonic excitations this small analysis is very important okay you need to know its behavior okay how it behaves dynamically at different frequency only we can predict or determine the response at a certain frequencies. All right, so that is uh, uh, some introductions. Okay, coming back to the theory itself. Uh, so, in finite uh, uh, element uh, analysis, right? So it is very similar to uh, you treat or you formulate the the existing uh, problems. Okay, your existing uh, so called. Uh, so call your solid mechanic problem into a uh, from a continuous system into a discrete uh, okay system okay so when you have a discrete system basically it is uh, so called uh, it, it is so called your m like m1 m2 so basically uh, m3 m4 so something similar like this right so when you have a continuous system right so it can be represented into a, a, a discrete system as we have shown here so if you can uh, 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 you if you have uh, discretized okay uh, that continuous system into this discrete system so it is similar uh, with what we have learned previously in uh, the formulations of our finite element methods. Uh, so we have the mass, each mass will be representing one node itself, then we have co connected to uh, the, uh, the stiffness itself, then basically it builds us the stiffness matrix, how we learn uh, to build the stiffness matrix. So uh, from there, we can, we can solve uh, our response previously, right? So in this particular case, uh, the first part that we uh, like I mentioned to you, to know the harmonic response, we need to know uh, its natural the, the the set of natural frequency and uh, uh, corresponding motion. So here, if you can uh, uh, your continuous systems, uh, you if you can uh, uh, under what we call uh, multiple degree of freedom, if you can. Uh, uh, represent them in the multiple degree of freedom, what, we, what I call is a discrete uh, system itself, then you're using uh, your, what we call uh, Newton methods, okay, or uh, Lagrange uh, equations itself, you can actually come up with uh, the equation of motions, okay? So this equation of motion, basically, you have uh, one degree of freedom, then you have this mx double dot plus uh, 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 kx equal to zero. Right, under multiple degree of freedom, of course you have uh, uh, one degree of freedom. You have probably one. Uh, all right, so you have probably one mass itself, right? So you are treating the entire system is just one mass itself. 
then uh, here, here that you have the equational motion that, that represent this uh, particular system is mx double dot plus kx equal to zero under free vibrations without them peaks. Okay, mx double dot plus kx is here is your force is zero, right? And you don't have your uh, uh, the general is mx double dot plus cx dot plus uh, kx equal to f. Okay, so in this case, under free is zero, under undam is zero. Okay, so under a uh, single degree of freedom, okay, it's like this. So if you if you think, okay, I want, uh, for example, multiple degree of freedom, meaning I need to discretize into uh, more nodes, okay, more elements. So then in that case, that particular uh, so-called uh, continuous system now it become a, a higher uh, so-called degree okay uh, you have more elements more nodes in this case so it become a multiple degree of freedoms so under this multiple degree of freedom it can be written okay basically is representing uh, 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 depends on uh, if you have n degree of freedom then you have n uh, uh, so-called second order uh, ODE uh, n uh, equations uh, Okay, second order ODE. Okay, so so in matrix form you can represent something like this. Okay, so to know uh, uh what we call to to uh, determine okay here under modelysis itself we will want to determine its uh, natural frequency and uh, the mode shape. Okay, so this natural frequency and mode shapes are uh, you have to go back to the the theory what. Does it mean so? This natural frequency and mode shape is the uh, inherent properties of a uh, uh, a system. Okay, every system uh, uh, inherently or by since its first day in uh, what we call is born, you have its own set of natural frequencies and the corresponding mode shapes. So that is how it behaves dynamically at different frequencies. All right, so. If you are talking about one degree of freedom, then it will have one natural frequency and one mode shape. So if you have this particular system itself, okay, I need, I need to uh, uh, clear the concept first. Uh, why we are doing this uh, natural uh, finding uh, natural frequency and mode shapes. Uh. So we know that okay, its natural frequency omega n equals to cert k one over m one. Okay, so we know how it will by uh, uh, vibrate also so it is going of course going up and down like this this m itself m itself will going up down so basically it's going like this uh, back and forth okay so at what at what uh, frequency it adds uh, omega n which is cert k o k1 o m1 so this it is the the single degree of freedom natural frequency so in here if you want to determine a, a natural frequency and mode shapes, uh, so we uh, usually uh, we say that uh, it is under free vibrations. Okay, basically it is not uh, it is not giving any force. Uh, basically, it's just uh, initial condition. So basically, if we like our can deliver ruler, if we press it, then we that is our initial conditions. Then we release it. Then it will vibrate. This thing will uh, basically uh, deforms at its natural frequency so it's something similar uh, uh, so it is free okay and without damping in this case if you want to determine it okay then uh that is one of the uh criteria that another thing is one degree of freedom you have one natural frequency okay two degree of freedom you have two natural frequency so if you have n degree of freedom you have n natural frequency so in this case if you have a n uh, nodes or n in uh, final elements, uh, if you have n nodes, then you have n, n uh, degree of freedoms, uh, uh, then you have n natural frequencies uh, in this case. All right. So if you have uh, this equation of motions, uh, uh, second order ODE, uh, so here under free and uh, free vibration and without damping, uh, so it will be in matrix form it will be arranged uh, as you see here uh, mx double dot plus uh, kx or sx equal to zero All right so of course this x is our response okay and we have to assume okay our response is a uh, sinusoidal right 
So this is a, a dynamic system. So it is not your X is not going to go uh, over time. It's not going to be like this. OK, it have to be. Going also sinusoidal because it's a dynamics. OK, so harmonic is also a harmonic function. So it's a harmonic response, as I mentioned to you. OK, so this harmonic function basically can be represented by this. OK, X and sine omega T, okay, omega not T plus uh, a phase. Okay, so it could be it's not always from it is not always from this zero. It could be from it could be from uh, here. Okay, it could be any from any any time instance. So here we are putting a, a, a phase difference at here. Okay, but this omega omega not T is this frequency. Okay, so we are saying that okay when uh when uh, these systems, OK, uh, if you have one degree of freedom, you have one natural frequency. So the response, OK, when uh, under these uh, initial conditions and uh, when respond, when it vibrates, uh, when it start to, when you have uh, initial conditions, it will start, will vibrate at its natural frequencies. OK, so if you don't disturb it, then your X is always zero, right? So you have no response. But if when the case of is giving an, uh, initial conditions, then uh, this particular uh, system will vibrate at its own natural frequency omega n. Okay, so that is what for one degree of freedom. If you have multiple degree of freedom or n degree of freedom, so you have n natural frequency that will vibrate at its own uh, natural uh, so-called uh, frequencies. Okay, which is omega not itself. So if, if I have uh, here talking about if I had two degree of freedom, I have two natural frequency. I will have uh, uh, the response, okay? At a first natural frequency, which is omega O not one. Then at the second natural frequency, I have my response at omega not two, okay? So if this is my omega, if this natural, this is the natural frequencies, uh, if I, it vibrate at its natural frequency, and my X uh, is vibrate at its natural frequency, what it means here, my, my this amplitude, uh, Amplitude is its mode shapes. Uh, it's corresponding mode shapes. So this XM is my mode shapes. This is my natural frequency. So from uh from uh this uh uh second order uh, uh equations uh, we if we can solve the X uh, then uh, we can uh, find the natural frequency at n its corresponding mode shapes. Uh. This X itself. Okay, is its corresponding mode shapes. So if you can find X, then we know what is the mode shapes. So if you have a two degree of freedom, for example, uh, here, yeah, okay, M one, M two, uh, so this is K two, K one, fix that here. So you have two natural frequencies. So you have a uh, omega, uh, n or omega not one, okay, and omega not two. Okay, so at omega not one, so you will have its corresponding mode shape. So how you vibrate? So probably you will see this one going here. When it going front, this M1 also going front. So that is its mode shape, so how it move. Okay, so another one will be uh, probably for, uh, so we are saying that M1 going here, M2 also going here. So that is uh, its corresponding mode shape to natural, first natural frequency. So if for the second natural frequency, so probably there is another mode shape where M1 going front, M2 going back. Okay, so that is another uh, uh, natural frequency and its corresponding mode shape. So if you have multiple degree of freedoms, okay, and natural frequencies, then you have n mode shapes. Okay, how the 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 nodes okay will uh, deform. Okay, it all uh, depends on the natural frequency and their motions. All right. So if we can rearrange this, uh, uh, just now we have. Uh, let me uh, m m x double dot plus uh, so call our s x equals to zero. So our x double dot is our uh, accelerations. Uh, so it's actually uh, equals to negative omega square x okay so if you still uh, basically 
the relationship between your displacement and also your acceleration uh, is this. So you can have your negative omega square m. Okay. Sorry, m. Okay. And then plus your s. Okay. Equals to your x equal to zero. Okay. Multiply with x equal to zero. All right. So here. If you can rearrange this uh, uh, equation of motions uh, in terms of this itself, then uh, uh, we can find, uh, basically it will give us a set of algebraic uh, equations uh, where h, uh, h, this itself is our h itself, right? h uh, matrix is our so-called uh, characteristic, characteristic matrix. Uh. Finding this, uh, solving this characteristic matrix, then we will have a set of uh, natural frequency or here is uh, eigenvalue later on. So uh, uh, if you rearrange this thing, become like this. Uh, so we can represent this itself is equal to our characteristic matrix H. So HX equal to zero. So for non uh, trivial uh, solution, right? So uh, X cannot be zero. So the determinant of our characteristic matrix have to set to zero la, so that we have a, a, a solution. So, okay, else X equal to zero, then basically no uh, vibration or no dynamic response anymore, right? So X cannot be zero, then our determinant of this uh, characteristic matrix have to set equal to zero. So if we set this equal to zero, our characteristic matrix equal to zero, uh, solving this, uh, determinant equal to zero, then we can give, it will give us a set of uh, omega roots. Uh, the root will be the omega naught. Uh. So if you have one, de uh, two degree of freedom, so you have a root of two, then basically you have uh, omega not one, omega not two. If you have a five degree of freedom, then you have uh, omega one until omega five. Okay, so that basically gives us here, giving us our omega. Okay, so that here we are saying that. Uh, this now is uh, actually eigen vector problems. Uh. Sorry, okay. ah, it's an eigen vector problems. Okay, so solving this, okay, we have omega uh, the eigen values or what we call the natural frequencies. Uh. So we have omega uh, not one, uh, omega not two until uh, omega not n. Okay, so each omega not one. Okay, substitute into this. Uh, so-called uh, algebraic equations, it will give us a set of x. Okay, so that this x is uh, x m itself is our its corresponding uh, motions. Okay, uh, what we call its uh, corresponding deformations. Or uh, here we are saying that its mode shapes. So when it run at its natural frequency, the response. Okay, it's actually the course the mode shapes or what we call the eigenvector in this case. So here. If you have a n set of natural frequency, then meaning you have a n uh, mode shapes or what we call its corresponding uh, motions. Okay, so that is how you solve fits. Okay, to find a natural frequency and mode shape. So similarly, if in the case of uh, finite elements, uh, so if you have discretized it into nodes, okay, uh, into elements, so you have a nodes. So each node itself is basically representing one mass. So basically you can build your K matrix like what we have uh, learned before. And you need here another is this is your K matrix, system matrix. This is your M matrix. So with the system matrix and the uh, mass matrix itself, we can determine the natural frequency as well as its corresponding motion. So we need to know how to determine the M. Okay, so if we can have we can formulate a K elemental system matrix, then we can uh, basically uh, assemble them into our global system matrix. Similarly, with the one elements, we have a M mass matrix, then we can uh, formulate the mass matrix and assemble them into a, a global mass matrix. Then solving this K minus omega square M, okay, determinant of this equal to zero, we get the roots, we get the eigenvalues, we get the natural frequency. So from this natural frequency itself, substitute into this uh, algebraic equation, then we can get the corresponding mode shapes. Okay, so K, no problem. Lah. We have learned, uh, we have uh, learned okay, uh, how to determine. Later on, we will see how to determine the, the M. All right. 
So each eigenvalue have its associated eigenvectors. Okay, what it called, what what I uh, what it means here is natural frequency have its own mode shapes. Okay, eigenvalues are absolutes. Okay, the natural frequency is the absolute values. Eigenvector is a relative value. It's not absolute. So basically, it's a relative. So if you have, if you have, uh, uh, just now like I mentioned to you, uh, uh two degree of freedom, uh, or two two nodes, uh, so we have M1, we have M2. So we know that the first, okay, it could go uh, together, okay, the mode shapes uh, at the first natural frequency. The second one, okay, M1, uh, M2. So we know that it go like this. So this is at omega naught 2. So here we said relative because uh, it have to be uh, be reference to one one point so you have to re reference let's say for m1 so it could be when this thing going uh, uh when this uh, mass one going uh, forward so okay mass two also going forward so it is it is following or be reference to mass one right so if my mass one going backward okay so this thing is going backwards okay? it could be be reference to mass one or it could also be reference to mass two and it's not uh, absolute because uh, this value could be, let's say, with the unit of one, okay, with the unit of one, with the unit of one. It could be also with the unit of two, okay, with the unit of two, with the unit of two. So it's not an absolute value, just relative, okay. So if it's two, then we know that it's two. So for example, here, uh, the second mode, okay. So if it's relative, we say it's relative because it is when this uh, mass one going, uh. Uh, mass one going forward, then we know that mass two we reference to mass one if we're going uh, backwards. Okay, so it could be uh, at one, negative one, or it could be also in let's say talking about uh, three, uh, negative three. Okay, it could be any values. Okay, so it's a uh, relative uh, motions. Okay, without any uh, absolute values. Okay, so if it's it could be also. Uh, this one going uh, negative one, then we know that it is going positive one. All right, so that is uh, what we call uh, relative motions. Okay, so remember, uh, natural frequency is the absolute values. Okay, it basically uh, mode shapes. Okay, uh, later on when you see the motions and the numbers have no meanings. Okay, basically you are. It is with reference to one single point, then you basically the movement itself is a relative motion. All right. So the concept here basically telling you that okay, if you have n degree of freedoms system, basically you have n natural frequency and n corresponding uh, mode shapes. Uh. So uh, similarly, if you treat it as a, a, a continuous system itself, then you discretize it into n nodes okay or and um, elements itself then you will be basically analyzing your your problem as a multiple degree of frequency all right so here we are saying that uh, if you have one degree of freedom then uh, one mass uh, one node then the motion is also only one okay it can only go up and down for example here so that is only one natural frequency and one mode shapes. Okay, so when this motion running at its natural frequency, when this mass running at its natural frequency omega one, uh, so meaning to that your x one itself is its mode shapes now. Uh. So if you have two degree of freedom, you have nat two natural frequency omega one and omega two. So here your mass one and mass two, okay, uh, how it will uh, move uh, basically is. It's a back and forth. Uh. So you go both in phase, both going into the same direction from the first natural frequency, like what I mentioned to you. And here, the second natural frequency is one going uh, down, one going up. So what it means here, if, if, okay, uh, if I know, okay, if I know uh, these natural frequencies, uh, so I know how just now I mentioned that if we know the natural frequency and mode shape of the dynamic characteristic, we know how this system behave dynamically, okay, how it behaves. Okay, so meaning to that, if I know the system now is running at omega 1, okay, if I run at omega 1, if my omega now is equals to omega 1, 
which is my excitation frequency equals to my natural frequency, I know the, the this particular uh, uh, beam itself will go something similar like this, okay, back and forth, okay, going up, down, okay, basically like this, up, down, up, down, okay, so that is how I, 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 I can predict its behavior at different frequency, so meaning to that at a uh, at uh, your excitation frequency very close to your natural frequency here, then we have the motion uh, mainly uh, contributed by this particular so-called natural frequency. Okay, because we know that at natural frequency itself, it will have its motion that is corresponding to its mode shapes. Okay, so if I know uh, my omega. Now it's in between omega two and omega one, so I know that you have a combinations of uh, the the response uh, or your vibrations itself will have a combination of this and also uh, this. Okay, going up and down. Like that. Okay, we have combinations. So at a different frequency, when omega equals to omega two, then I know that yeah, this particular beam itself you have you are vibrating at these particular motions, okay, up, down, okay? So that is why it's so important to know uh, this natural frequency and motion shape before we can predict its uh, motions, right? So three degree of freedom, three natural frequency, three mode shapes, okay? It's very uh, uh, distinct. Uh, so the, each natural frequency, it will have its own distinct uh, mode shapes and it won't repeat. You will see, uh, let's say mode two, uh, uh, natural frequency number two won't have a similar motions with the first natural frequency modes. Uh, so they are very distinct. Okay. So if you have a four natural frequency, four uh, degree of freedom, uh, four nodes, uh, then we have four natural frequency, then you have uh, what we call four mode shapes, corresponding mode shapes. All right. So if you have more, then you have more. Lah. So uh again similar like your finite element uh, analysis uh, so if you have you dis discretize it into a higher number of uh, elements meaning uh, more nodes right um, uh, more nodes then you have we will determine uh, uh, more uh, so-called uh, natural frequencies so for examples for examples uh, 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 a cantilever okay a cantilever okay so if i just Treat it as one degree of freedom, meaning uh, here probably is a spring and the mass system itself. So uh, 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 probably I have to uh, uh, draw not like not like this. Uh, wait, uh. So if we have a candy liver system, uh, so if I am treating it as uh, because it is going up and down. So if I have uh, I'm treating it as a mass, okay, connecting uh, to a, 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 a spring itself, then we know that it will only go uh, this particular uh, so-called motions, okay? one, 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 one mode, one natural frequencies, okay? So if you want to know uh, a second uh, natural frequency, then you need at least a two degree of freedoms, okay, connecting here, okay, connecting here. So you will know uh, probably a, a mode like this, Okay, the uh, motions like this, then you have also uh, emotions like uh, this. Okay, so depends. Okay, depends on how many uh, nodes, okay, or elements that you are available. Okay, when you discretize this particular uh, so called beam, okay, can deliver beam itself. Then uh, more nodes, uh, more nodes or more elements, then you will have more natural frequency and more motions, more details or higher order motions in this case. So if you have just one net, uh, one node itself, then probably you only have can get the very first fundamental uh, natural frequency and its fundamental mode shapes. All right. So just remember, OK, if we are now is discretizing the, our actual system, just for example, means similarly with our final element problem, uh, methods. Uh. So here, a uh, continuous system, we discretize it, okay? Uh, we, uh, we, 
we discretize it into uh, multiple um, uh, elements. Uh, so it's similarly. Uh, so if you are saying that you have an uh, actual system, okay, you have an in, infinite numbers of what we call uh, uh, natural frequency and mode shapes. But because of we discretize agent, we have a finite numbers of uh, a degree of freedoms. Okay, in this case, uh, here you have finite numbers of uh, element itself. You have finite number of degree of freedom itself. The mode shape of the natural frequency also is a finite numbers. All right. So if you have uh, basically we say that each natural frequency have its own mode shapes. Okay. So continuous structure has infinite number of natural frequency and uh, corresponding mode shapes. So we finite element uh, analysis of finite elements, we are trying to uh, go as close as the actual system, right? So of course, discretization uh, becomes important, so, right? Your, your elements, right? So if you uh, continue system, you have infinite. So uh, here, uh, continuous have an infinite number of natural frequencies. So if uh, you have discrete, uh, system and multiple degree of freedoms okay multiple nodes then you have multiple uh, n uh, number of uh, natural frequency and its conversion mode shapes so under harmonic excitation or steady state excitations uh, so you have a uh, what we call uh, you have a possibility of this natural frequency uh, your excitation frequency or harmonic steady state excitation frequencies uh, uh, coincide or go near to its natural frequencies. Okay, so when this happens, okay, so we are expecting a very high vibration, and this particular uh, phenomenon is called resonance. Okay, so resonance case, I think most of you uh, know what uh, uh, what is resonance. Uh. So resonance is when you have an unexpected high amplitude uh. so this amplitude is dynamic response uh, which is the harmonic response itself unexpectedly high dynamic response uh, when your excitation frequencies uh, which is your uh, this is now the f okay when your excitation frequency this is your force uh, that frequency itself okay the force frequency itself is uh, t equals to one over f come close to this F itself, uh, come very close to, okay, this F itself, close to your F naught, okay, or what we call your omega. This, if I put in 2 pi F, which is omega, okay, is close to omega naught, okay, so depends on which frequencies, okay, so if you have your F, Okay, uh, excitation frequencies uh, very close to the first natural frequency, then you have what we call or coincide with the first natural frequency, then you have resonance. So if you one degree of freedom, you have a one time uh, of getting resonance. If you have two degree of freedom, then you have a two post times of getting uh, natural uh, resonance. N degree, then you have n times. Okay, so this n times of net. Nat, uh, natural frequency, uh, excitation frequency coincide with the uh, ex, uh, natural frequency, uh, excitation frequency coincide with the natural frequency, then that you, meaning you have, you undergoing n times of resonant condition, n time on unexpected uh, high uh, dynamic response or high vibration conditions. All right, so here is where the effect of frequency come into play. So, uh, uh, merely looking into uh, the amplitude itself uh, it is not enough okay we have to consider the in, uh, effect of frequency because we know that under uh, uh, dynamic analysis the frequency of your excitation frequency coincide with your one of your natural frequency it will have uh, unexpected high vibration so here we are saying that okay so if you could have a uh, n degree of freedom then you have n natural frequency so the amplitude itself uh, even your f equals to a uh, a uh, sine uh, 2 pi f t okay so this is equals to omega t okay so your your x uh, 
your your x itself okay is let's say is x not sorry is not always at x not lah uh, it's not always at this x itself not at the fix it is not uh, con same over frequency okay so it's two pi f d plus uh, 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 phase okay so this is also your omega okay so if we want to say that if my it is not a constant like this your x okay your x is not a constant x not okay over frequencies okay over different excitation frequency why because this system inherently or uh, it come with its own natural frequencies okay you have n natural frequency so when this omega which is your excitation frequency uh, close to omega one okay so your x is unexpectedly high so it will go for example let's say we are saying that maybe i will just we say it's not constant so it is not at a constant value as here x so when it's at different frequency your w okay when your w okay in slightly increase until when it close okay when it's near to omega one uh, your first natural frequency it will go very high until it coincide then it will be the maximum so when it pass by your omega you keep increase again then your x will your x not uh, here will come down okay until certain values when it near to omega 2 the second natural frequency then it will go up again okay so your x not is uh, basically change okay or it's not uh, uh, constant over the difference uh, over diff uh, over this frequency omega okay so because it when it meet when when it meets uh, sorry when uh, it meets uh, this omega meets the omega n uh, right then then uh, you will have a uh, high x no. right so your x itself is uh, unexpected so it changed okay it's not like what we have uh, uh, used previously in uh, our static analysis we are assuming these uh, static loads now become a dynamic load. Okay, at uh, this static load give us a, 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 a equivalent stress of let's say uh, twenty megapascal. Then uh, we are assuming that under static analysis, this twenty megapascal is a sinusoidal twenty and uh, uh, so uh, twenty and negative twenty something like this. Okay, so no, because it doesn't consider the e e effect of frequency because if you have at different frequency right so your amplitude will be different your stresses also will be different your equivalent stress probably will be amplified more than the uh, the axis uh, uh, originally one okay so later on we'll see this all right so here we are saying that and times and natural frequency and time of getting high vibrations uh, or high dynamic response where we have to consider it okay so that is the concept of resonance uh. so uh, it's particularly important uh, when we want to consider uh, fatigues uh. so it will uh, significantly affect our prediction uh, if you have fatigue the it will uh, uh, affect our uh, prediction in terms of life uh, okay because the the, the the amplitude is different over frequencies then the the stress of course will be different okay the induced stress will be different the life of, of course will be different all right so to know the uh, to know the or to determine the natural uh, uh, frequency and mode shape we need the case uh, matrix and the ma m matrix uh. so how to determine the mass uh, mass matrix so probably we can make use of these uh, Lagrange equations uh, uh, you know, to, to, to look into it uh. so this Lagrange equation basically uh, making use of uh, creating the equation of motion uh, mx uh, uh, mx double dot plus kx uh, uh, 
uh, uh, in terms of uh, using the kinetic energy and also potential energies. Uh. So uh, the kinetic energy part basically is refer, uh, related to our so-called M uh, X double dot. Uh. So the potential energy part will be the KX parts. All right, so kinetic energy and potential energy. So if you revisit back the X sales members, uh, so if your if your uh, beams or your system is undergoing uh, axial motions only. Uh, so if you still remember the K is can be easily uh, obtained. Uh, we use uh, uh, this AE over L, right? You still remember that. So it can also be determined using this uh, so-called potential energy part, the K. Okay. So, but here we are focusing more towards uh, the mass. Uh, I mean, the, the, the mass matrix. Okay. So uh, displacement, if you still remember, in terms of its uh, uh, shape function, uh, is SIUI plus SJUJ. So uh, in terms of uh, kinetic energy, basically is uh, one over two mv square. So it's u not uh, u dot uh, u not. Okay. So basically, this is your displacement. Uh, time derivative, basically, is uh, your velocities. Uh. Okay. So that. Uh, gamma itself is mass per unit length. So here itself, you will get a uh, one over two mb square, which is your kinetic energies. Okay, so the kinetic energy. So, uh, in terms of uh, nodal velocity, then we can put u not equals to si. Uh, this uh, displacement uh, now is velocity and uh, nodal velocity u not and u not i and u not j. All right. So that is our velocities. Hmm. All right. So if you have, if you put in into your, uh, you have the velocity, my right, in terms of shape functions, then uh, nodal velocities are uh, in terms of shape functions, then. The, the kinetic energy basically you just rewrite it in S here. Okay, so taking the derivative of uh, your uh, kinetic energy, uh, just now we, we mentioned that the kinetic, in terms of to get the, the terms mx double dots, uh, basically is the derivative of my uh, uh, so called kinetic energy terms with respect to the velocities. Uh, x not uh, d t del t del x not then we find the time derivative of is basically is equal to m x not uh, m s dot uh. so uh, the time derivative of it again time derivative of this itself then we get m x double dot so that basically get us our m uh, later on so we find dt the x uh, not the velocity then we find the that time derivative of this d, the derivative dt the x not all right, so in this case, you have your dt du naught, eh, which is our velocities, right? So that basically uh, find again the time derivative against for both both one, okay? Then basically you have your mass matrix. We know that this itself is our this itself will give us our m x double dots, All right? So this is our x double dot, this is our x double dot, this is our x double dot. So our square of our, uh, the integral of our uh, uh, shape function square, the x itself is multiplied with our mass per unit length itself is our mass matrix, okay? So that mx double dot, our m itself now is uh, here, our s, our so-called s, I, you still remember our S, I is 1 minus X over L, X, J equals to X over L, right? So X, I square, okay, then in, integrates the integral from 0 to L itself, you get uh, 1 over 3, okay, gamma L. Okay, so this is our, this itself basically is from uh, gamma 0 to L, S, I square dx, right? So this zero to L, 
multiply with gamma, it gives us uh, this part, right? Gamma L over six. All right, so that is where you get your mass metric lah, when a member undergoing axial load, axially load. Our stiffness matrix also the same lah, if you are using this uh, uh, particularly uh, what we call the the, the the what we call mm. stiffness matrix is already using the potential energy itself then you will get this ae over l la. all right if going to beams okay he will under if you have beam you see remember we have a uh, four uh for uh two uh one element you have two nodes uh. each node we have two degree of freedom then we have four shape functions uh, if you still remember that right so one is going uh uh, transverse, okay, then another one is going rotations. So four shape functions. So basically, we also want to find uh, what we call the kinetic energy. Basically, is this is our displacement. Our kinetic energy basically is the the time derivative of uh, this particular displacement. I uh, know the displacement itself is v naught square. All right. Then uh, finding the derivative of this dt dv not uh, d uh, ui1, ui2, uj1, uj2, then find the time derivative, then we get our so-called uh, mass matrix. Okay, so here is a, a four times four mass matrix in this case. So from here, we find the derivative again, uh, the same uh, from here, we find the d, t, d, del ui1, del ui2, d, del t, del uj1, del t, del uj2. Right, then from here we find uh, another the de time derivative. Okay. Then this itself basically gives us our uh, M X double dots. Right? So here we have the mass matrix basically equals to uh, depends. Uh, so here we have our four times four matrix. Uh, so here we have our uh, 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 M11, one, one, okay, M, uh, M21, M31, M41, M12, M22, M32, M42, M13, M23, M43, M43, M14, M two four M three four M four four, right? So that is a uh, relating uh, this particular part itself. Okay, there's the the functions, the shape functions, integral of the shape functions. So that give us our uh, mass matrix, which is this. All right. So the Stiefner matrix is already uh, obtained previously. Yeah. So. Uh, so if we have k, we have m, then we can find the natural frequency and the mode shifts lah, right? using that uh, for, uh, the, uh, the characteristics uh, matrix. Uh. So if you have frames, of course, uh, it will we add the axial together. Uh, we add the axial together with the uh, the transverse uh, plus the rotations. Uh. So basically, it's a six times six uh, matrix. So your mass will also Basically, is combining uh, the the axial plus the beam itself. Uh. So now, from previously the axial, right, is this, right, is this. This is from axial movement, right. Two, one, one, two, right. So it convert to a four, four twenty, one four zero seventy seventy one four zero. So add into here. Okay, then here, then you have here and here, right? So replace with this. Then you have your full mass matrix uh, for frame is uh, as you have seen in this slide, right? So you have mass, you have stiffness with the orientation coming in, right? Then uh, with the transformation matrix, similar like the frame itself, uh, you also can get uh, mx double dot plus uh, k 
uh, x equals to zero, right? If you then you can get m, you can get k under a global matrix, a global coordinates, then you can determine your natural frequencies and also the corresponding mode shift in this case. So if you can have m, you can have k, and you know the load itself uh, with the information of a natural frequency and mode shapes, then you can also later on cons co uh, obtain the x, the response. All right. So that is uh, about the what we call the 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 mass metric determinations. Uh, right. So coming back to the theory that we have learned. Uh, so if under harmonic excitations, uh, so your equation of motions now, uh, but especially harmonic excitations, uh, where we say that the damping have to be included. Uh, if you still remember, and you have now your equation of motion, we have the excitation as well as the damping. All right, so to solve this, okay, basically you can change all into x, for example, like that itself, then you, you for, solve the x. Basically, it's the, uh, uh, here talking about your uh, force over the re resistance itself, right? That will give you your displacement, okay? So, or you can try to solve it using a uh, perform in a model domains, okay, where you are, uh, where this is in the, the MCK domains. Uh, so you have your X equal to like this. This is how it being solved, uh, this equation of motions. Uh. So if you divide all by M's, then you represent your equation motion in terms of damping, in terms of natural frequency, then your equation motions now become X double dot plus two zeta omega naught X dot plus omega naught square X equal to QT. All right, so to solve this, uh, you can uh, represent them in terms of uh, uh, complex exponential forms. Okay, complex exponential form is uh, we know that our x have to be uh, uh, harmonic excitations, harmonic response. So our excitation must be also harmonic uh, excitation. So it's a uh, can be represented by uh, complex exponential forms, right? So to solve that, Basically, if you put x equal to b e power of i omega t, then we can find our x naught. We can find our x double dot. Then from there, we can substitute into this equation to find our x. Okay, our x can be represented or can be determined in the complex exponential form. So at the same time, because this is a complex exponential form, it's also in the harm, part, part of the harmonic uh, excitations. Uh, harmonic motion, so it can also be represented in a trigonometric forms. Uh, so in terms of uh, cos, sinusoidal function, so either in cos or in the sine, right? So x also can be represented by q cos omega with these denominators, or you want to put it in uh, mck also can, okay? So in this case itself, uh, we want to say that our x, just now we say that it's an x not the uh, sin omega t plus phi. Okay, you also can write it as x equal to x not uh, cos uh, omega t minus uh, uh, a phi. Okay, a values. Okay, this is phi not or phi. Right. So in this case, uh, it's a we, as long as it's a sinusoidal function. Okay. So here itself, if you look into this q over the denominator itself, that is our x not our vibration amplitude. So here, if you plot this particular graph, it's a, a particular function, it's a, our x over t, of course, it will be something similar like this, okay? Where this itself is our x naught, which is equal to this q over the, at the whole at denominator, all right? So that is how we learn, uh, how, uh, what we learn in uh, uh, mechanical vibration, uh, I mean a single degree of freedom, all right? Then we look into also uh, multiple degree of freedom uh, because in finite elements we are we have uh, not only uh, uh, one uh, one uh, not not itself okay one element at least got two nodes so it's actually at least two degree of freedom okay so we are making use of the theory of one degree of freedom later on to solve the multiple degree of freedoms okay so that is what we learn in. Uh, multiple degree of freedoms are the normal mode methods, okay? So here, we will want to actually highlight that, okay? In uh, uh, 
multiple degree of freedom, sir. So everything are couples, okay? You are not uh, in multiple degree of freedom. So you have uh, the node, let's say this is the mass one, connect with mass two, connect with mass three, and then connect with mass n, okay? So this, they are all couples. So basically that is something similar, like uh, probably your, uh, your can deliver. So this is your node, 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 node. Right, so I still remember. So we we assume that this is uh, connected by the node is all connected by a stiffness itself. Right. So to 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 solve this equation, this basically can giving us our m x double dot plus k x equal to zero. To solve this x itself, it have to solve simultaneously. Okay, simultaneously meaning uh uh this thing you have to go through the PDE then you you can solve this thing. Okay. The other method is we uncouple it. Okay. Uncouple it using the normal mode method. We uncouple it into a uh, n single degree of freedom. So later on we will see how uh, we would want to uh, to do that. Okay. We how we do that uh, to, to to solve this type of problems. Okay. So here in uh, very uh, in multiple degree of freedoms. Okay. Uh, it's what we call in spatial domain. So we are dealing with this x one x two x three and until x n. So all are in spatial coordinate space. So if you, this is only one dimension, one direction. So you could have y directions, the y movement, okay, the z movement, okay, in this direction, z movement, right? So it could be, uh, it could be more, uh, even more uh, uh, complex, okay? So it's a special spatial domain. Then if you want to solve this in spatial domain, then you have to solve simultaneously. So it's a couple or mass are coupled together, okay? Then that basically give you n degree of freedoms, right? If you can generalize them and you transform them into a separate coordinate system, here we are calling it a normal coordinate or principal co coordinates, right? So here we are saying that this particular n degree of freedom now is in, uh, from spatial domain now is in model domains, okay? All this mass spring system from couple now is being uncoupled because it is being in n single degree of freedoms. Okay, so basically it's n single degree of freedom. Why I say so? If you look into the the theory itself, uh, in multiple degree of freedoms, yeah, you see this. Uh, so if a multiple degree of freedom said that is how you you see like the equation of motions, right? A full equation of motion, this one. Right. So that is in original coordinate. So to solve it, you have to solve simultaneously like, to get your x1, x2 until xn. Okay. So what we said uh, under normal mode method or under model domain method, we we transform this. Okay. We look this problem okay into other the different coordinate system. Okay. We are not looking into this spatial coordinate x1, 2, 3. Okay. So we are we are looking into a model. Uh, domains, okay, meaning to that we are making use uh, uncouple them into a, 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 a single degree of freedom problems, right? So this, if you put it into a principal coordinates, you can see that uh, the entire multiple degree of freedom equation motion uh, from the top. Now it can be simplified into this principal coordinate system and giving you n single degree of freedom equation motions. Okay, so you have this m p x double dot p okay, plus c p x p dot plus k p uh, x p equal to q. You see or not? So that is our equation of motion. Uh, equation of motion. So now you have uh, if if you are doing this diagonalization, what we call diagonalization of the metric itself. Uh, so then you will have a diagonal matrix M, C, and K. Okay, so if, if this itself, your multiple degree of freedom now become a N uh, single degree of freedom. Okay, so if you can rearrange it, okay, if you arrange it, uh, so now uh, it is actually what we call X double dot plus uh, two, uh, uh, sigma x dot right so this is what we have learned x double dot just now plus two uh, zeta omega 
not okay, uh, x not plus uh, x omega square x equals to our p okay, or q t right so that is what we have learned before right so this itself is our zeta so this is our s d o f degree of freedoms uh, equations so now the entire multiple degree of freedom become uh, n single degree of freedom right so uh, later on you will see that a finite element uh, method also do something like this okay to to solve a problem of harmonic excitation so if i can do this if i can uh, uncouple them into n single degree of freedom so meaning i solve them one by I want uh, using a single degree of freedom equations, right? To get our xp1, xp2, xp3, until xpn, right? So no no issue at all, right? So you can you can solve one by one to get xp. And remember, this xp is not the uh, the the x, uh, not the original coordinates x. Uh, it's not the one that we want to find. So it haven't ended. At here. So when you solve this XP, you are in a separate coordinate. You are in model domain. So from this XP, we have to convert back to X. Okay. So from this XP itself, you can solve using single equation of motions. So from this XP itself, be using the relationship of uh, the mode shapes as well as the, your 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 XP itself, then you can you can. Okay determine back the the x all right so what it means here what you can deduce from here all right you can get your x okay until x1 until xn okay so you know x1 is uh, x not one uh, sine omega t plus phi one then x2 is x not two sine omega t plus phi two so basically, you know all the response of each node itself, right? Each degree of freedom or each node itself, then probably the node itself uh, basically is your, yeah, from that element, right? So to know this, uh, you see, you know, uh, to, to determine the, the X, uh, the actual this deformation in the original coordinates. Uh, so what we need here is the excitation frequency, you see, the excitation frequency, from the force, okay. The, of course, the force itself, lah, we need to know the force, okay. Uh, the load and its natural fre excitation frequency. Then we also need the damping. We also need the natural frequency and we need the mode shapes, okay. So, first, from the mx plus uh, mx double double plus kx equal to zero, we determine our natural frequency and mode shapes. Correct, uh, again, vector problems. Uh, so with these information together with the force information, then we can determine our actual deformations or actual x itself, right? So that is how the proof process. So from uh, your m x double dot plus k x equal to zero, so we we use become eigenvector problem, right? So we get our our omega, not we get our x m or our phi, okay? So from there, right, then we have this mx double dot plus uh, cx dot plus kx equals to our so-called uh, q, our uh, well, uh, p, our f, right? Our, our force, of course, is a harmonic force, uh, harmonic excitation, f not sine omega t, right? So here we don't solve it simultaneously, so we put everything in a model domain, uncouple it, so we have a uh, n n times our x double dot uh, p uh, uh, plus two zeta uh, x dot p plus uh, uh, omega square uh, x p equals to q, right? So n times. So we have this x p one until x p n. So from here we find our x, right? x1 until xn all right so that is the flow you see or not so we need to first knowing the behavior okay so what what it means here 
we need to first uh, knowing the behavior of our system, okay, and uh, under analysis behavior, the dynamic behavior in terms of natural physics and mode shape. From this, we can know how or how much it vibrates. Okay, okay, so that is the flow. So final element also using uh, this particular flow, uh, to 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 solve. So here we are saying that uh, it's a mode uh, superposition uh, method. So, okay, our response itself our x is contributing by okay the modes okay by the modes you see or not and the contributor okay these two depends on uh, how close it is how much is the damping and how is my mode shapes correlate with my this particular x okay so this x itself is contribute or what we call the response itself the final response of this system itself is actually contributed by my mode shapes or modes itself. This frequency response itself basically it tells us uh, we know that this is the first natural frequency, right? The first peak is the first natural frequency, second peak is the second natural frequency, right? So uh, if you are looking into this particular peak itself, it actually, if you uncouple it, uh, basically it's the first, the response of uh, the contribution from the first natural frequency, the contributions from the Second natural frequency of our total response, right? We are saying that our total response, the third from our third natural frequency of our total response. Huh? All right. So if I want to find my response x, like what you what you see just now, so I have to calculate, okay, the contributions, okay, of total response from different modes. Huh? So it depends on how many degree of freedom. If you are talking about n degree of freedom, you have to consider n contribution from n modes. Okay, meaning to that your total response uh, x uh, is this. If I now I consider only three, uh, so it's this x one. Okay, at this particular point x plus this particular x plus this particular x. If you consider there are only three modes, right? We said modes per position. So all modes will contribute to the response. All modes will contribute to the total response. So of course, further away from the from the particular frequency itself, the modes that further away from the excitation frequency itself will contribute lesser. For example, this mode three will contribute the less compared with my mode two compared with my mode one. So when you add them up, the most contributing uh, uh, the modes uh, is actually mode one uh, because it's near to the near to the mode one, right? So in the case of at here, if your excitation frequency omega is at here, then you know that uh, your contribution is uh, almost equals uh, from mode one and mode two, then followed by mode three in this case. So again, you have to add them up. So how to add them up is basically your just now your x equals to five. Uh, x p okay summation right so this is the contribution from the mode itself from the mode itself multiplied with my mode shape itself then i will get my x1 x2 so this x1 will have a contribution from mode 1 plus mode 2 plus until mode n all right so similar like what you have seen at here so if you are doing this, okay, uncouple, then you add them up together. Okay, that is what we call mode, uh, superposition methods. Okay, we are assuming uh, the response of the particular node or particular mass itself uh, is the uh, uh, is contributed by the modes. Okay, so each node will contribute. So it depends on which one is most uh, contributing the most. Uh, it depends on how close is your a uh, few things that how close is your natural frequency with your excitation frequency, how high is the damping, and how is the relationship between the mode shape and the, how the force is uh, being uh, applied. Okay, so that are three factors that determine this uh, X itself.